Hi everyone, <clears throat> welcome to my YouTube channel Networking Made Easy by T.S. Srinivas. So in continuation with our uh, last session where we ended uh, after quantization we learned about the number of uh, line coding schemes then scrambling technique. Okay. So after knowing how this all binary bits are being uh, uh, represented in the form of uh, pulses. Now, next important topic is now we have to send it to the medium, isn't it? It has to go to the receiver. So, it has to be sent through the medium. So, before sending it to the medium, then what is the next thing is we have to modulate it because already we know that the baseband signal as it is we can cannot send it to the receiver. Okay. So, we have to modulate it. Okay. Now let us see what are the different uh, modulation techniques uh, available with us with uh, to represent uh, uh, digital signal into the analog form. So as we have discussed already in the modulation uh, topic uh, as far as analog modulation is concerned. See what actually modulation is nothing but we, we have a carrier frequency, carrier frequency. So it is having a three parameters like amplitude, uh, frequency and uh, phase. So, we are using these parameters to represent the modulating signal. Okay. Now, let us see how these binary bits are being uh, uh, represented by using one of the parameters in the carrier. Okay. So, let us take a sample bits. You can consider it as, as a line coding schema as far as NRZ is concerned. Okay. So, zeros are represented with the low voltage means a negative voltage and ones are represented with a positive voltage likewise. Okay. Now here the first scheme is nothing but the ASK. This is a simple one amplitude shift uh, key. So here what we are doing is we are modifying the amplitude of the carrier in accordance with the modulating signal in the sense say binary means we have only because the job is very less unlike in analog because the signal is continuously changing. So, uh, there is a lot of responsibility in the analog modulation. But here, we, as it is, we know that there are only two values, the zeros and the ones. Okay. So, here, zero is represented with no carrier. Nothing is there. No carrier. Zero. So, the one is represented with carrier. Is Amplitude is with respect to the amplitude means the pulse value. That's it. The carrier amplitude is representing the pulse value. Okay, so that's why here you, it's a very simple technique. So it means the presence of carrier indicates that there is a one. Absence of the carrier indicates that it's zero. So that's how it has been represented here. So wherever zero is there, no carrier. One is there, carrier is there. Zero, no carrier. Okay. So the modulating signal is represented in this form. S of t is equal to so a cos 2 pi f c t there is a carrier frequency okay this is how the carrier is being represented okay so this is representing value 1 and whereas no carrier 0 okay so this type of modulation technique uh, you can achieve maximum up to 1200 bits per second okay the modems modem generally we use the term called modem okay modem is nothing but the modulator and demodulator so uh, it is found everywhere even in your houses we are using this particular modems so what it is so there, there are some modems the basic modems which were using the ASK technique used to provide speeds up to 1200 bps it's not very popular the ASK scheme is not very much popular okay now coming back to the next scheme is the frequency shift keying the frequency shift keying is what is being done is so one frequency, one frequency is representing, there are two different frequencies are being used. Okay. So the, because you can just imagine there is a carrier frequency, the carrier frequency, the central frequency, it is being deviated. Okay. To deviate it to one side, lower side and the higher side. Okay. So these two frequencies are equal and opposite. Okay. So one frequency is representing zero and other frequency is representing 1. So that's how it is. Okay, you can see the lower side, the frequency which has been deviated, 
okay from the center frequency to the lower side see this is representing zero and whereas frequency which is deviated towards the higher side is representing the one okay so that's how you find wherever the one is there the frequency is slightly more okay where the zero is there the frequency is lower okay so the receiver we will be able to detect it so there are two kinds of frequencies available one frequency one set of frequencies is representing zero one set of frequency is representing one okay so that's how this all bits zeros and ones have been represented with different frequencies okay so accordingly the modulating signal is represented like this okay so here one frequency the higher side frequency is represented by the one the lower side frequency is represented by zero okay so here we can take one modern example okay see generally uh, we have seen that uh, in the telecom the 4 kilohertz bandwidth is used for the uh, for delivering the voice signal isn't it okay so in the same lines if you want to send the digital signals the same bandwidth if you want to use and send digital signals okay the you just see how frequency shift keying is being used okay now here you see there are two set of frequency bands there are two set of frequency bands very small you just see here in this case the center frequency is 1170 hertz okay 1170 hertz okay so this is deviated towards the lower side that is 1070 hertz and higher side this is 1270 hertz okay similarly there is another center frequency 212y25 hertz okay so this is deviated towards lower side that is 2025 hertz and similarly the higher side 3225 hertz okay now you just see so you just see in order to communicate between the transmitter and receiver okay there is one particular concept like okay so now this is the first time i'm using the term called duplex okay so in order to achieve full duplex in order to achieve full duplex so what should happen there should be a simultaneous communication okay trans receiver because the transmitter one side of the transmitter is transmitting so other side the receiver should receive if that is transmitting this has to receive okay so to and fro if if at all because from point a to point B, if the communication has to happen. Suppose it has to go, okay, simultaneously. Suppose we both are talking because I am transmitting, you are receiving, when you are uh, talking something, I am receiving. See, that is what the to and fro communication, it is a simultaneous, okay. So this we call it as full duplex, okay. So to achieve this particular thing, so that is the reason you have two types of bands available here okay now you should understand how it is being used here see suppose for example here okay this modem a is using this band for transmitting say okay now a will be transmitting okay one bit one bit with this frequency and zero bit will be transmitted with this particular frequency who is going to receive the b is going to receive okay a is transmitting b is receiving okay so one side it is the same line the same line is being used for to and fro communication okay when the information is moving from a to b okay it is using this particular band okay it is this is just 100 hertz band it's a small band okay so now so it is understood isn't it now similarly another small band in the same line the center frequency is 2125 hertz so who is using it 
B is using it. Okay. Here, B is transmitting with this particular small band. Okay. Now, receiver is, who is receiving? A is receiving. So, this is another small concept. How frequency shift keying is being applied for communicate means for sending the digital signals. Okay. So, you might have understood that a small uh, how this ones and zeros are being communicated by using frequency shift key. Okay. So, this is another scheme. Now, we will come to the PSK. PSK stands for phase shift keying. Okay. See, in analog mo modulation, we are not uh, discussed much about the phase modulation. We were to telling that both uh, frequency uh, modulation and uh, uh, phase modulation, they were contrary in principle, isn't it? Okay. Now, here you can clearly see, clearly, I uh, mean, like the phase shift keying modulation is extensively used for digital communication. Okay. Now, you will further see what is the beauty of this particular phase modulation here. Okay. Now, what has been done here is, see for representing zeros and ones, a burst of frequencies, okay, a burst of frequencies is being generated. A burst of frequencies. For representing a zero, a set of frequencies is coming, fine. Okay. A set of frequencies is coming, it's okay, fine. Now, whenever it is finding one bit is available, okay, there is a phase change. Okay, here there is a phase change. This is this particular set, another burst of frequency is being generated, which is exactly which is exactly opposite to the previous one. So the receiver is looking for a phase change. If there is no phase change during the bit interval, it is assuming in comparison to the previous frequency. If there is no phase change, then it is a zero. Whenever there is a phase change, then it is a one. So this particular frequency is exactly 180 degrees out of phase with a frequency of zero. Okay. So likewise, again followed by one. So there is again phase change with the previous one because the receiver is looking after the bit interval, the start of the bit interval, there is a phase change. Okay. So this is one. Fine. Then afterwards, it's continued. So you are finding zero. There is no phase change. Similarly, again, one is there, there again, it is a phase change. So this is how being it's directed. So this particular scheme we call it as a phase shift keying. Okay. So the modulating signal is being represented like this. So what it is, so for representing zero, it is a normal carrier frequency, a burst of frequency is being generated, fine. Whenever receiver finds this, it is zero. But if it is exactly 180 degrees, phase shift with the carrier frequency, then that is representing one. Okay. So this particular uh, concept we call it the differential phase shift. Why? Because differential phase shift because that whatever the carrier is there, it is exactly 180 degrees opposite to the previous one. So that's why this particular uh, uh, principle yeah, parameter we call it as a differential phase shift king. Okay. Now up to here it is okay. Now further, this phase shift keying property is being utilized beautifully, okay? Because in further, like you are going to listen to the new terms called QPSK, okay? Quadrature phase shift keying, quadrature, quadrature phase shift keying. See, what is the thing is, of course, you have achieved one small property of shifting the carrier in phase. Okay, so why only 180 degrees? You have 360 degrees, isn't it? All together you have a 360 degrees. So if you are able to manage this uh, phase shift, okay, in whole this three degrees with the previous one, so you can generate so many symbols, so many signals, each signal representing some bit value. Okay, so that's how what we are achieved in this quadrature phase shift keying is okay the phase shifts it is being done in multiples of uh, 
pi by 2 okay in the multiples of pi by 2 then we are able to achieve different phases okay so each phase shift the carrier with each phase shift it is representing two bits okay here with uh, cos 2 pi uh, plus pi by 4 you find it is representing 1 1 okay now so far this is the first time we are saying that one signal element is representing two bits okay so with the next shift 3 pi by 4 it is representing bit 1 0 and 5 pi by 4 it is representing 0 0 and similarly 7 pi by 4 it is representing 0 1 okay see what we have achieved here is with the four different phase shift angles we are able to represent each signal element is representing two bits okay so definitely we are achieving very small thing that is the bit rate has been increased unlike with earlier schemes here in this particular uh, scheme we are able to increase the bit rate okay now similarly similarly by managing this particular phase shift we are able to achieve more and more bit rates okay for example say now here we are representing two bits okay if you are representing three if you want to get three bits then how many eight levels should be there if you are able to eight signal elements then you will be able to represent three bits okay similarly if you want four bits each signal element if you want to represent with four bits then you should have 16 signal elements okay now see that is what we call it as 16 qpsk okay so now just see what actually is being done in this 16 qsp see likewise you can keep increasing with uh, 32 qpsk then 64 128 256 okay so now if you are able to understand this very small concept like 16 qpsk what has been done is okay you are having 12 phase shift angles okay you are having 12 phase shift angles in addition to this what we are doing is we are adjusting the amplitude also okay if you are adjusting uh, four phase shifting angles out of all 12 with a different amplitude means what is happening is for one particular angle you are having two amplitudes okay one higher amplitude represented certain value and the lower amplitude represent different value so likewise what you are able to by doing this particular technique you are having 16 signal elements okay since you have 16 signal elements so each signal element is representing okay four bits four bits each signal element is representing four bits okay now you see that's the reason because of this we are able to find one new term called modulation rate okay so this we call it as a board board okay so now you just see this is represented by d is equal to r by b d is equal to r by b r is nothing but see so far we have been saying that r is nothing but data rate it is bits per second okay it's a stream of bits it is represented in the bits per second okay but the d what is the modulation rate it is signaling rate it's different okay it is different to the uh, bit rate why because how many signals each signal is representing how many bits so that's how the signaling rate is different okay so for example in the 16 qpsk there is a modem okay whose bit rate is 9600 bits per second 9600 bits per second this modem is able to generate this much of bits per second okay but it's baud rate d is equal to 2400 why because this r d is equal to r by b and b is nothing but number of bits per signal element okay b is nothing but the number of bits per signal element so here each signal is representing four bits so that's the reason 
the baud rate is equal to 2400 okay 2400 watts per second okay whereas uh, bit rate is represented by 9600 bits per second okay so that's how we got this particular formula d is equal to r by b okay now see here see this is the first time you are seeing what is a baud baud is nothing but the signaling rate or modulation rate it is different to the bit rate bit rate is nothing but what all the bits in one particular second you are able to send okay which is leaving the transmitter okay but what is uh, the signaling rate is different the modulation rate is different okay so that's how you have seen here here because one symbol is representing four bits so that is the reason the baud rate is 2400 okay now again it depends upon the type of signaling scheme you are using okay so definitely here if you take this particular example here r is represented by 1 by tb tb is nothing but its width uh, duration okay so one bit duration it is tb is one bit duration that's how it is okay so that's how you are telling uh, uh, how much one bit uh, duration is there so 1 by tb that represents number of bits per second okay this is simple in the case of uh, this is shown 1 by tb in the case of a normal nrz scheme okay but you go for a manchester or differential manchester see when a series of continuous ones or ones or zeros are being uh, uh, transmitted you find that number of pulses are increasing like anything because each pulse is having two changes isn't it the signals are changing two times so every mid of the bit there is a transition isn't it so then the baud rate will be increasing okay so definitely if you go with that particular scheme the baud rate of uh, manchester will be slightly more than the nrz uh, scheme okay so now when we discuss this particular concept because this is uh, when the baud rate increases so your transmission bandwidth requirement also will increase so that's how the cost increases okay so so in this session we have learned about the different types of uh, modulation techniques so in continuation this the next uh, episode uh, we'll see see now so far what you have done is you have converted your signal into the <clears throat> bits form then you have encoded it then you are able to modulate it now it is moving through the medium now another important thing you have to study okay how it is very safely reaching to the receiver so what are the factors especially the noise how it is affecting this particular transmission okay how the receiver is able to detect this okay so what is a bit error rate what is the signal to noise ratio what is a bit error rate okay uh, how different schemes are consuming how it is related to the bandwidth so these all things we will see in the next session okay i hope you understood what is uh, this particular simple modulation techniques available for uh, digital communication okay so let's meet in the next session thank you bye